Good morning. I'm Frank Cousins. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give a little background about my father. Frank G. Cousins Sr. was the youngest of eight children from a single parent household here in the city of Newryport. He graduated from Newryport High School in 1941. He completed all the requirements for high school graduation and his diploma, and he was ready to graduate. But he was discriminated against at his high school class graduation. When it came to line up, Frank was told he could not line up with the graduates with the names beginning with C. Instead, he had to walk alone and keep his composure through the commencement ceremony. However painful, Frank did not become bitter or hateful toward others. Instead, it formed his character and fortified his resolve to promote diversity and equality for all. He made that his life's work. This was at the beginning of World War II. Frank's three older brothers encouraged him to join the Merchant Marines during World War II. So off he went to Castine, Maine. He served in the Merchant Marines for the time of the war. His decorations were the Atlantic War Zone Medal, Merchant Marine Emblem, Honorable Service Button, Presidential Testimonial Letter, Victory Medal. He saved several of his shipmates after his ship hit a mine and sunk and spent time in Russia before they were removed. After the war, he was employed at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. He spent his entire career fighting discrimination in the workplace. With constant fear of retribution and the constant possibility of losing his job. He pushed to eliminate discrimination and bias from the Elks and Moose Clubs in Maine and New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Those were all sanctioned under the State Alcoholic Beverage Commissions and their liquor license were going to be removed if they did not desegregate those social clubs. Upon Martin Luther King's assassination, it was a very turbulent time in America. George Wallace visited here in Newburyport. The letter I'm about to read is really key for Martin Luther King's birthday here today. I found this letter while cleaning on Water Street at the homestead where my father and those eight children were raised. Dear Mr. Cousins, this is in reply to your letter on the 9th of January, 1975, concerning the observation of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, January 15th in 1975. The lowering of a half staff of the national ensign and the playing of the black national anthem in commemoration of that day, the authority to order the national ensign to half staff is vested in the President of the United States of America. And the designation of the national holiday and honors to be rendered on those days are uh, the edict of the United States Congress. The day the national anthem I am familiar with and with that knowledge, I cannot substitute it for the Star Spangled Banner due to the single nation status of the United States of America. While aware of the achievements and the aspirations of Dr. Ken, I am so in empathy with your desire to honor and respect his memory. I am not empowered to enact either of your requests. However, on the 8th of January in 1975, a notice was published. Those who feel inclined to observe a minute of silence in commemoration 
of Dr. King's birthday at the start of the 1130 lunch period on Wednesday, the 15th of January in 1975. It would be fitting at this time to play your recording. However, I do not have a copy. So with the loan of your copy of this recording and provided we have the facilities to play it, we will. Sincerely, William D. McDonough, Captain of the United States Navy, Shipyard Commander. This letter was to really promote Martin Luther King's birthday and more importantly, to share my father's vision for equality and wiping out racism as Martin Luther King did. New Hampshire was the last state in the union to accept Martin Luther King's birthday as a holiday. Not until the year 2000 was it made law by our good friend and Governor Jean Shaheen, who is now a United States Senator. King preached about a beloved community where all humankind would strive together for peace and justice. That vision of society is one my parents wholeheartedly endorsed as something we should try hard to achieve. How can we use Martin Luther King's vision to help solve today's race problems? The most recent example was President Trump inciting an angry group of white Americans, encouraging them to storm the nation's capital and riot and wave Confederate flags. Talking about race and solving racial tension, tension must be a priority in America. Understanding that black boys of color and boys of color will be extinct if we continue on today's path because of our struggles with mass incarceration, underperforming public schools, drugs and alcohol, no family structure, public corruption, no jobs, and most importantly, no hope, and lack of leadership at all government levels. I would like to close with a quote from Martin Luther King, Jr. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The time is always right to do what is right. A riot is the language of the unheard. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. In the end, we will remember not only the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent in things that matter. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of com comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. On behalf of the Cousins family, 
I want to personally thank Reverend Rebecca for allowing me to speak today. She has put together a wonderful ser sermon and really means what she says. She's committed to uh, diversity and racial tolerance and in, she's been a real gem for us here in our beloved community of the city of Newburyport. Martin Luther King and my father fought and strived for all of those things that we must continue to work on. And may peace and good health be with you all. Thank you very much.